Hey church, yesterday was Palm Sunday when Jesus rode triumphantly into Jerusalem and it begins Holy Week or Passion Week. Even in Jesus' day, this was a special week as the Israelites prepared themselves for Passover. Each day this week at 6.30, you will have a short devotion preparing our hearts for Resurrection Sunday. We will focus in on Mark's Gospel as we see what Jesus was doing each day in Jerusalem. Since today is Monday, let's look at Mark 11, verses 15 through 19. The Bible says, They came to Jerusalem, and he went into the temple complex and began to throw out those buying and selling in the temple. He overturned the money changers' tables and the chairs of those selling doves and would not permit anyone to carry goods through the temple complex. Then he began to teach them, is it not written, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of thieves. Then the chief priests and the scribes heard it and started looking for a way to destroy him, for they were afraid of him because the whole crowd was astonished by his teaching. And whenever evening came, they would go out of the city. The services that the vendors were providing uh, for those that traveled to Jerusalem was not necessarily the problem that Jesus was addressing. Think about it with me just a minute. Uh, you were required to come to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover. And if you can imagine traveling 10 miles or maybe more on foot uh, with your spouse, your children, and all the necessary requirements uh, for an extended period of time in Jerusalem, uh, it would be difficult to take everything with you. It kind of reminds me of today on a family vacation when we go to the beach. When we get there, we always have forgotten something and we have to go to Walmart. So, there were vendors that would allow you to first exchange your money because most of the coins that you would have had would have been Greek or Roman coins, which means they would have had usually some deity on that. That was not appropriate for temple use, so you would need to exchange your money for a coin that did not have uh, an image uh, of another god on there. And there were vendors that would supply you for things that you might need, like a lamb, a goat, uh, perhaps some doves that you forgot to bring on your trip. The services provided was not the problem. It was they had set themselves up in the court of the Gentiles, and they were just not providing a service, but they were robbing the people that came to worship God. Do you ever go to a ball game or a concert and think when you have to buy that $5 bottle of water that you kind of got swindled? Guess what? They wouldn't let you even bring your own in, so you had to buy their product. The religious leaders had a money-making racket, and that is why they challenged Jesus later. Even in this chapter of Mark, we will see where ask Jesus, by what authority do you do these things? Now, unless we get too comfortable that Jesus is addressing the hypocrisy of the religious leaders, yeah, it's about everybody else, isn't it? Not me. Let me read to you Jeremiah 7, verses 1 through 11, because that's part of the scripture that Jesus is quoting. In Jeremiah's text, it says, This is the word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah. Stand in the gate of the house of the Lord, and there call out this word. Hear the word of the Lord, all you people of Judah who enter these gates to worship the Lord. This is what the Lord, the host, this says of Israel. Correct your ways and your deeds, and I will allow you to live in this place. Do not trust deceitful words, chanting, for this is the temple of the Lord. The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. Instead, if you really change your ways and actions, and if you act justly toward one another, if you no longer oppress the foreigner, the fatherless, and the widow, and no longer shed innocent blood in this place, or follow other gods, bringing harm on yourselves, God says, I will allow you to live in this place, the land that I gave to your ancestors long ago and forever. But look, you keep trusting in deceitful words that cannot help. Do you steal? murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, burn incense to Baal, and follow other gods that you have not known? Then do you come and stand before me in this house called by my name and say, We are delivered, so now we can continue doing all the detestable acts. 
has this house, which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your view? Yes, I have seen it. This is the Lord's declaration. Note through Jeremiah's text, God was condemning the religious form over substance. God wants a genuine relationship with us, not some false pretense like you uh, remember as a child when your mom or your dad would say, now tell your sibling you're sorry, and you'd look at them and you go, sorry, when you really weren't, you didn't mean it. See, we've come to the beginning of Holy Week, and we need to ask ourselves a question. What things would Jesus turn upside down in our religious form? Would he reveal that you spent more time looking for candy for an Easter basket? Or you spent more time looking for clothes or preparing for a lunch than we did honoring him? Do we bring some type of offering to him only to go out and live our life like before? See, Jeremiah 7 is really about obedience over sacrifice. Cleansing the temple. That message is for all of us. What do I need to do to prepare for the church's greatest celebration, our resurrected Savior? I hope that then in this coming week, God will speak to you and you'll be ready to come back as we worship Him on Easter Sunday morning. Thank you. Have a good rest of the day.